Hey folks, welcome back. Things now change into best of five, as it is the grand finals. Spawn here to the top left. We of course have the green Terran, repping those Gen Air colors. It's Cure. In the bottom right, as the red Terran repping no one. It's innovation. So yeah, you. Uh, I was asking you a little bit about this because I guess it's an American holiday, Martin Luther King Day. I always get really confused about this, so I'm not ignorant to history. I know who Martin Luther King... Uh, is it Martin Luther King Jr.? Or I don't know. The black guy, he had the speech, the dream, all that stuff. I know who that is, and I know what he did and why it was so important. But I unfortunately learned uh, like European history before American history. So it's really hard for me, and my brain has been wired as like Martin Luther King. He's like the guy who nailed like the, the thesis to the church that door and all that, right? Like Martin Luther, his last name wasn't King. Excuse me, Martin Luther. Whatever. Point is, I mix those two up a lot when I hear it initially, but then you take that second to think about it, and you're like, huh. But my question is, and I don't actually know this, maybe someone in chat has the answer, because you don't, apparently, through break. Uh, what is the day to celebrate? Like, is this just celebrating his life, his death? Like, I know it's a major holiday, but my question is why? And this is coming from just an ignorant Canadian who just doesn't know better. I'm not trying to incite anything. I'm pretty sure you don't celebrate people's death days. I'm actually trying to think of other days you celebrate about people, and like, is it who's dead? Like, There's literally Jesus. something called the Day of the Dead? Hello? You celebrate everyone being dead, I guess. But even even then, like, technically, <laughs> Americans don't celebrate that, so <laughs> still not a good point. Celebrate Halloween. Uh, Jesus, you celebrate his revival and his birth. Although not his exact day, I guess. So I, I, I mean, I don't know. It could be. Um, I just know that I think it... I think that February is Black History Month, too. It happened shortly after Martin Luther King Day. I mean, my uh, guess is, without deal. knowing, without Googling, and I'm sure I could solve this with a quick Google, it's just like, it's probably a celebration of his oh, achievements his... and accomplishments. Sorry, what did you say? I'm going to guess it's like a celebration of just like everything he did, like achievements oh. and accomplishments, because it was a pretty big deal. It's, it's his birthday. I just Googled it. Oh, okay. There you go. Easy peasy. Yeah. It's, so, it's quick time. It's not great time. I think for 90% of the people out there, though, all it really means is a day off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's much better than Columbus Day, because uh, you probably should learn how that's not a great thing to celebrate if you're going to learn anything about it. But most people to say is a day off. Martin Luther King Day, I guess, is supposed to be a good thing to learn about, you know? A anyways, that's maybe why a lot of people are watching today. Or maybe why they're not watching. I don't know. It would be that they're watching because they have the day off, or they're not yeah. watching because they're not at that work with nothing to do <laughs> watching. <laughs> You get a day off, you gotta watch some StarCraft, man. That's how it goes. Uh, this first fight goes pretty well for Cure in terms of scrapping. He's probably not gonna get too much out of this, but denying a little bit of mining, almost killing the mule. That would have been nice. That's a pretty new mule as well. Yeah. Like the innovation to pull that back to the main. Cure is going to really get innovation with this Liberator, it looks like. The Cyclone will probably go down the natural, considering that he might even think he has a chance to run across the map if he'd be even farther away. Although the Viking might be perfectly timed. It's gonna be really about where that goes to, is rallied to. If it goes to the nat the main, the units and I'm mining at the natural. Where's that Viking? Mm, this is gonna hurt. He pulls the SCVs. Even that though is still gonna sting. That's a lot of denied mining time. Picks off that mule, grabs a couple more workers. Nobody's safe if you're still trying to mine. Eight SCVs down. Ouch. That's really nicely done. I, I mean, the Liberator, maybe if Innovation had just had only Cyclones, had done more, but that, that, that denial of both Natural and Main, eight workers straight up, Cure did an absolutely great job getting himself a lead, five workers well, ahead. It's a funny lead, though, because of course this all came from a combination proxy as well as a delayed command center, so recovery here is pretty quick for Innovation. You'll notice that counts from Bridge tier, but. The Banshee should have something to say about this. This Banshee should net quite a few more kills. Innovation's got a really good understanding of TVT. This was displayed in his semifinals match. But, I don't know, man. This might be one of those ones just too hard. Like, even though you know what's going on, it's he held back the Banshee too, so he's going to have two of them to one-shot the workers. So even if Innovation reacts, he still might take too much damage at the time it takes him to react to this. Yeah, it's going to be... It's gonna be dangerous. Innovation's Banshee is going to find an equally unsafe mineral line. I guess the scan will be ready. And three Cyclones would kill a Banshee. Um, oh, he mules. Yeah, I was worried about that. Orbital's almost done. 
Uh, who does more? Who does more damage? Innovation may be distracted because he got here first, so he might think like, okay, I've got a clear uh. lead with this. He loses the Banshee though. This Banshee comes All in. Right. Second Banshee's heading straight to the natural. The fact that, oh, well, actually, Cyclone threw on top of this one. I was going to say that Cyclone's killed with one scan Innovation's Banshee. I thought it was going to give Cure an advantage. And with the second Banshee, it might still, but a scan's ready at the natural, too. I mean, they're almost you know, done. Even, even just scanning, though, I mean, this is still damage done. But worker counts are evened up, and this is no no lead. Oh, this is where Innovation might get ahead. In fact, this is definitely oh, where Innovation yeah. gets ahead. Mass Repair. This is going to buy a lot of time. Turns into three <laughs> shot. I love the master pair though. It's it's a it's a brilliant quick reaction. Not a lot of people will do this. Mm -hmm. well, the cyclones took a little while to get up here. Uh, missile turrets taking its time being built, and this is still a lot of damage despite attempts. Nullify it. Does get taken out. And now Cure is down five workers. So much for that lead that he had. So I'm getting uh, roasted. For having no education on not knowing about this Martin Luther King Day stuff. Look, guys, here's the thing. First yeah. off, I never claimed to be a smart man in the first place. That was your first mistake. Secondly, I, this is not a holiday we celebrate up here in Canada. So I, like, if I start talking about Terry Fox Day and you don't know about Terry Fox, like, do I start calling you an idiot? Like, oh, this right. is a genuine question because I I've never, never uh, really encountered this. It's also totally understandable if it was just a day chosen to celebrate his legacy. Like, it doesn't have to be a birthday or death day, so... Yeah, it would make a lot more sense to me to celebrate, like, what he did for... Anyways. It's always uh, awfully coincidental it's on a Monday. <laughs> and it's not enough there. <laughs> Long weekend! Woo! <laughs> I don't know why. Um, that anyways. would be the greatest combo thing. Like, your life actually did something that changed something as big as like racial segregation and tensions and stuff and on top of that you also gave everyone a long weekend for the rest of your life well for the rest of their lives excuse me <laughs> like yo well, that's how you yeah. get remembered in the history books man is that the one thing that american does america does do right I'm, I'm trying to think here that we have a rule that says if there is a holiday in the middle of the week we push it to monday is that a rule if there's a rule, but I'm not, I don't remember if it was America or I heard about another country that does this, but that's always the case. Like we don't have a random holiday on Thursday. Well, it's like Easter. Easter's like every second Sunday or third Sunday. Like, it's not a set date, right? Like, Yeah, but even on like, uh, even if Martin Luther King's birthday was on the 14th, which would have been yesterday, we still would, would have Monday off. So. Got a double dip. Uh, the Banshees are finally all taken care of. Oh, here's making even another one, but these Hellions are the new threat. Nothing in the natural as Kiro's trying to take map control and he slipped right uh, on by. I do like the way he's pulling the SCV small portions at a time though to minimize the damage. This could have been so much worse. Like any of the SCVs is not good, don't get me wrong, but that could have easily been way more. Mm-hmm. I mean that that's really, really good for two aliens. Two armories come down, and it is going to be mech versus mech. Kiro <laughs> multiple factories, innovation uh, multiple it, factories. It's obvious. It, Innovation first to the draw with the Liberators, though. Again, he's got a pretty good handle on the matchup. This is kind of what we saw, because he was playing against Cyclones before in his semifinals. He just went tanks. He just went Liberators. He knows what to do. Uh, but this whole uh, holiday conversation has got me thinking, too. Like, I wonder how much there is about... I'm sure there's got to be a lot of these holidays where a lot of people just... They know it's a holiday, but not sure why. And I'm wondering how, how big of a deal, like, how widespread that is. Like, what percentage of the holidays of the year do people actually know? Like, Christmas is obvious. Oh. Ooh. I'm not, I'm not sure, but this well, is turning into a very awkward game. Pause. Yeah, yep. all the cycles get right past Innovation, who, by the way, these units Innovation has were able to take these off if they were in position for it. But tanks are on the backside, they can't really see jump. He's got Leapfrog in, he doesn't have time to Leapfrog in, Zombie Grub. Oh, God. Well, Cyclones rule all. Apparently, it, it just when those tanks are siege and maybe they'll have a little bit of trouble, but they're gonna have a tough time sieging before the cyclones pounce on them. Two of them oh, do man. on the left side. Maybe Kier could have reacted a little bit faster, yeah, but, but he's gonna kind of go into the corner. Oh, down a base, 25, 28 SCVs. Numbers still going up somehow. I don't know if there's any left to kill. This did so much damage to innovation. I don't know if this is recoverable, but the liberator starts paying him back a little bit. A little tiny little bit. Kira finds himself only, I mean, considering he killed 29 SCVs, he's only up 7. Uh, that's not so bad, but what he's really truly up is the extra command centers, I suppose, or command center. He took the outward base and the back base, so his minerals is going to be a lot better than Evasion's. 
Starpa still hasn't been found. It's pretty funny. I just realized, yeah, the way he had transferred that over. Yeah. But, well, he has an extra command center. He doesn't have upgrades. Innovation has a bigger army supply. This could be Innovation's time to shine. I mean, Alive versus Keen, that's all that happened, wasn't it? Or ever faced Keen? I already forget. But that's all that happened was them constantly throwing uh, back armies and armies. Innovation versus Keen. Okay, well, regardless, like, this is the, the threat now, right now, and Cure having Liberators is a godsend, I think. Uh, otherwise, he'd be in a very difficult position. In fact, I think he would have to give up the third if he didn't have this, even with, uh, even with Cyclone trying to take care of him. I love the scouting barracks, by the way. It's such a silly thing to look at, but it's giving innovation a lot of information. Ah, uh, the tank leapfrog too is gonna be so difficult to break. If he had those, like, four liberators at a time, ideally at some point he breaks the tanks with just massive numbers of liberators. But Innovation's got just enough to take him down. So Cure feeling a little bit desperate, he doesn't want to wait for those liberators. He goes in for the break, liberators siege up. No anti-air is really setting up for Innovation, but he's killing all the cyclones on the ground anyway, so it might not matter. Oh, oh. more liberators come back. So many of them coming in from every different side. Of course, Starport being in the bottom really made that awkward. Innovation wasn't expecting that. Yeah, but you know what? Innovation got those STVs. 21 died in the defense. This was something he needed to make happen after those losses he suffered back on his side of the field. And he's building Vikings, whereas Kira was only building Liberators. Do not stack up. GG. Innovation's a hell of a player to watch, man. He is... Like, he gets caught out of position. He's down so many workers. So many other people are probably like, screw it, I'm behind. I'm so not going to win this game. But he digs deep. He plays smart. Uh, he gets the right units. Like, innovation is oh so good. I love watching innovation play. We don't get to see him enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, it's the best of five. It is going to be Cure's selection as it's loser's pick. So we'll see what he goes with here. Black, pink. Right. Kind of a standard map to pick. Yeah, yeah, it is. Anyways, this is the last series. This not the last game, but the last uh, best of five. Last anything we'll be casting for today's Alima League. So, again, as as I'm positive now, we must be losing front page time soon because they don't usually give it to us for more than a few hours at least. Uh, I want to just give a thank you to anybody who stopped by the channel. Sorry for the if the conversation like some people got really passionate about the conversation. I don't feel like there's anything offensive said, but uh, apologies if you guys got upset at that. Uh, but that's the thing about Bay Street TV, like, we kind of get off topic, we talk about curiosities, and I really like, I don't know, whether whether it's talks about holidays, I, can, I like learning things, like, again, I'm not a smart man, I'm not gonna pretend like I am, and that's why I like learning things, so I like, watching how it's made, discovering the origins of holidays, I know it's kind of nerdy and dumb, but I, I, I really like that stuff. And the cool thing is, with X many people tuning in, a couple of you are bound to have the right answers to the questions I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's there's bigger ways to to get people mad, though. You can never think of, a, of quite a few I around could, holidays, but we we definitely skirted most of the. I could go to the Japanese suicide force and take a selfie with a body. Put that as the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, you see Bill Murray roasted Logan Paul on Saturday Night Live, man. Oh my God, what I a time not. to be alive! All right, it's Blackpink. We'll see you guys. <laughs> All right, game number two for the Alima League Finals. Remember, guys, this is a best of five. You can always find the score displayed down here in the bottom left. And currently to the top right, we have the green Terran from Gen Air Green Wings. It's Cure. No points on the board. The bottom left is the red Terran. He is Innovation. We have Tilda, 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 and Chancing. Hopefully, we can see battle on the boardwalk. I got bad news for you, friend. It's not mm -hmm. in the map pool for this. The Elite League does something kind of unique. It's, I think at first it was like a necessity and now it's just become tradition. But Battle on the Boardwalk and Abyssal Reef are not in the map pool. They always cut two of the maps from the overall map pool. So there's only over five maps to choose from and not the full seven. And unfortunately, Battle on the Boardwalk is one of those maps. Yeah. The understandable one, they usually get rid of maps that are really, really wonky. Then this season, they also got Abyssal Reef, which has definitely thrown off some some pros who forget. So one of those standard go-tos. I had such a brain fart just now. I thought you said Goku, and I'm like, what does that have to do with this? They got Gokus. <laughs> He's going Super Saiyan with this build. He's powering up. Oh, my God. Um, 
Innovation has not just played great TVTs as he always does. I said, well, actually, there was a period where his TVT wasn't great, but it's more that he's playing it with these these victories that I think I would say most of the time people don't get away with. You know, he is getting a lot of damage with the Banshees. He is getting to tanks without playing the Cyclone game for a very long time. You know, that last game he had, what, four or five Cyclones kind of helping out the tanks, but it was really more about the tanks on the, the, the defense, and then, of course, a lot of the tanks on the offense. And Cure is is not quite getting the transition right. You know, he's dedicating too much to the Cyclones, not having enough tanks in the, the, the back, or... In his case, he tried to dive for multiple starports, which is an excellent move. Like, if they do beat you to tanks, and you worry you won't be able to catch up, then you could just try and, and beat them to starports, <laughs> but... Yo, it's impressive, and I'm glad you bring this up too, because th we have actually seen a couple of players try and skip the cyclone phase, like kind of akin to, to Zerg, right? You skip lanes and go straight to Roach versus Roach. It's not so easy to skip cyclones. It's actually kind of difficult to do that. And the fact that innovation, I don't know, he kind of makes it look easy. It's it's almost like a lie. Like you're lying to the audience, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like trying. I try and do that. You know, usually build orders are. A good enough thing to follow as a you know gold level player or something like that but i think if you try to switch as innovation does you'd have a bad time but kiri is going for a really quick 3cc really defensive play here not just a bunker so i i was suspicious he's going to go into bio and there's a second barracks but also a very fast engineering bay in case he has to deal with banshees again um this is how you play bio against so many no-go cyclones because there was that game where they you know they both went bio in the last series but that was kind of, as you said, a gentleman's agreement, kind of an odd like, coincidence. If you think an innovation would absolutely go for Cyclones, would try to bust your front, then build a bunker, get ready for an SCV pool, and, and try and get to a, a mass amount of Marines, like you know, 12 or 20 or something between there, do well. The worst, the worst part about that too is like if you play this game expecting him not to go Cyclones, you'll regret it, because that'll be the one game innovation does go Cyclones too. Yeah. Yep, and without you know much scouting because of what Cure opened up with, uh, it was going to be risky for him to, to judge. So this is okay. a really nice scout for innovation. Yeah, if he didn't get through to the main, this might not have been worth diving past the bunker for. He Well, certainly it wouldn't have been. He didn't get much kills for it. But he confirms that it's bio. There's no question about it seeing this many barracks in the tech lab already taken away. So he knows he's mm -hmm. not going to have to play the Cyclone game. He knows he's not going to have to play cheeky bugger countering the meta and just plays his, uh, well, frankly, however he's going to react to this. So Kira scans Innovation, sees that a Banshee is in fact on the way, so starts up a bunch of missile turrets. He also sees that there wasn't a Cyclone, you know, reactor on the factory for a bunch of Cyclones, or that a third CC was also already down, but, well, that was a, that was a bit of a lie, as third CC was on the way, just in the natural. Uh, the most important thing is that he builds missile turrets on time, and he'll have enough Marines with fast enough Sim to, to help out. Not with this first Banshee, but maybe there's a second or third one. Ooh. She's gonna escape. That's really annoying. Man, the yes. amount of turrets he's already been forced to build, though. Like, just three coming down like this. This is not money you want to have to spend. I am surprised with 3cc and mass amount of marines. He chose a protective production missile turret. I really thought he was gonna go for two, but he was worried. Because was... Spidey was something. Something's better than nothing. And innovation only went for the two banshees. Well, Doesn't it? I gotta try and surprise with three or four. Funny enough, that's not just any old supply D, but that did supply block here. <laughs> that's really annoying. Yeah. Get some reactor damage, that'll be nice. But while this goes on, Cure's going for a push, and this tank is gonna get caught! Oh, Innovation, no! no. Oh, this is a very gee. valuable unit to lose. Well, it did scout, which might have been even more important. Yeah, oh, no. he's, I don't know. He's still taking the third. Like what? Well, I guess there's no stim. There's no stim. So timing-wise, for a few seconds, he's okay. But that's not gonna last the very third. long. Third. But that third should should. Does Kyrus no idea? Kyrus no but, idea about the third. Oh no! no. <laughs> this should no. have been such a freebie. You know, at least would have stopped it from mining. <laughs> but innovation, <laughs> man. He's got he's got guts. He's even building gas guys on it, assuming it would be fine. These Banshees are still doing work, by the way. I love this. Like, picking off the Marines, he killed some of the SCVs that were coming out of the third, <laughs> forcing a lift off. Uh, too it's deep. So now, now he finds out about this base. Okay, there we go, Cure. It's so bad. Like, okay, this is not great for innovation, but it's so bad that Cure not only gets missile turrets in time, but also, like, Marines, which you can <laughs> spread around. You have so many of them. You're not supposed to take a lot of damage from the Banshees. 
Oh, I love Lithium is missing out on the no. fact there's no Zerg in these finals. So he tries to help out by Bane Stop busting it. his way in chat. Stop Both it. Stop it. Dude, 5,000 bits. Thank you very much, Lithium. You are far too kind. Oh, All right, so boy. 13 workers died. But curious on the third CC. Not the worst situation I've ever seen, but... I mean, this is innovation play in mech, man. Like, Marines aren't gonna cut it. Hellions are gonna chop you down, and Blue Flame's gonna make that even worse once he finally gets up to it. There is a bit of a weakness, you know? If you had Cyclones, if you had tanks, it doesn't matter. Like, you're still on some pretty low production compared to a bio player. That's that's always gonna be true for mech versus bio, especially in the beginning of the game. But here, with the the wonky having to defend against the Banshee, with the wonky non-medivac, non sim attack he did just a minute ago, doesn't really have a lot to pressure. I mean, even if you have 20 Marines and two tanks, but you get on the right side of the command center, that could still be something. I don't think this is going to be anything. One tank and like eight Marines. <laughs> okay, he's going to go for a drop. That's probably his best move, but the barracks would see it. Sorry, conversation with Lithium. I can't. I can't. It took it too. It took it too far. I can't. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Anyways, uh, congratulations on your new chat badge. Is what I should have said, Lithium. <laughs> oh, Innovation is playing a really good mech game. Yeah. Uh, he's he's on top of the good. suit. Like, there's you come here to drop, you're gonna die. It's it's. There's no way for Cure to hurt Innovation right now. Sensor tower is up too, so he'll see attacks coming. So he's taking this time to start running around the map. The blue flame's not done yet, but when that does finish up, SCV lines are in serious danger at all times. Mm -hmm. Innovation's not that far behind on upgrades with Cure's late armory starting up. He's protected past that really scary mid-game point where you, the, you do think the bio is going to have bigger armies and. He's also going to still control the air, because that's kind of the, the check mark. Okay, I didn't check marks. I didn't die in the beginning. I didn't die in the mid game. I have five packs of production. Am I going to die to starports? Am I going to die to liberators? He's also checked that off. He's not going to die to liberators, even though Cure is trying to also get some air superiority. They're both on the same starports count, and that's, that's not going to be, I think, the way that Cure wins, especially because Innovation's scanning, probably looking for just that. Like, are you trying to to one-up me here. I love this dynamic of mech. This hasn't changed. Oh my god, I just realized two more starports coming down. Uh, this dynamic of mech hasn't changed, where it's like, you're getting a lot of hell Vikings. It's what you gotta do. It matches Hellions, because you're using all your minerals and Hellions. You got all this gas left over. Good luck having any medevacs to heal that bio. Good luck having your own Liberators. Good luck having your own Vikings. Like, sky control is such a big deal. And, well, maybe there's a chance Cure was going to catch up with the two extra starports coming down at an innovation. And having armor upgrades through the sky units too, he should, without a doubt, have that sky control. He is a little bit later to multiple starports though. Even though Kira wasn't using his for like a while, he's on it now. Four Vikings, two liberties at a time. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it is safe to get a couple of Thors, or at least missile turrets. If you're gonna get to your turtling, just get missile turrets and maybe you'll be okay. But Thors, extra safe, and then he can really pump all of his money and gas into the starport production. I really he, like. Wow. I really love where, where single target Thors are at. By the way, like they have such good range. I can contest liberators that don't have range. They do so much damage. They can knock Madavax out of the sky in a couple of shots. I mean, whether it's two, four, or more, I I really like when you see good Thor usage. But it really should be low. You you should not begin too many Thors. Yeah, this should only cover the temporary. What well, was ideally a temporary weakness, but innovation. Um, by going for, I think, these these upgrades and Liberator range is still oh, a little behind no. on the Vikings. This army has to intercept this. Even then, I probably won't. Blue Flame will kill it. Just run past it. it. Okay. He, he could have saved okay. the tank. I don't know why he didn't. I feel like that's a bit of a mistake. But okay, SCVs. Here's some Blue Flame. Uh, enjoy your dirt nap. Oh, boy. This, this isn't objectively a lot of kills. But this got a lot of army and a lot of SCVs. So that ends up being so very worth it for innovation. Yeah. This also, I think, tells innovation that Kira's trying to be a little bit cheeky greedy. I think he knows that's the fourth, and you assume the third's an orbital too. 
and they just showed you a fourth as an orbital. They might even get a fifth as an orbital. That's why you just send Hellions literally every single time around their bases. And you just get freebies. I don't think it's, really it's so bad. Here. I don't think it's so bad. Oh man, I suppose two more target ports coming down. Innovation's like super, super air. Uh, Cause if you go planetary a lot of the time, you cannot range it. You, there's some funky spots you can go. There's some limitations on this map, like this base, you're better off going for a planetary. But for every other base, you can still outrange the planetary. So getting the orbital, getting the extra skin, getting the extra mules, probably worth it. It's questionable, but it, only if Innovation were to continue harassing and he does not he's not really making a lot of Hellions. He really <laughs> is putting everything into Vikings. Really, if you're going to win the Viking War, you don't need that many Liberators. A this... very rare world is where you're going to get the Liberators siege up despite losing the Viking War. Well, so this is where we're going to be at such a high number of Vikings that the splash damage from the Liberators might actually be valuable. Like, and even the Thors might be out of single target mode of splash right. damage. Like, we're yeah. reaching this point where you're going to have 27 Vikings stacked up. Three damage isn't much, but three damage on 27 units is a lot. You're right about that. And especially if either one of these guys tries to target fire liberators, that's when the, the Vikings, like, all, like, get together and, and have a party. But hopefully, and they both have read each other so correctly, especially Innovation, scans this army again. Especially because they know that's a possibility, there should be some attempt at splitting. Oh lordy. Oh, oh those Liberators in the front line, not targeting the Vikings. Liberators go down though, those are stacked up Vikings! But all the Liberators go down, the Thors are going to be covering the ground fight. This should go better for innovation. 20 Vikings to 21 though. And there we go, now the Thors are in that fight. There we go, there we go. Kira doesn't have anything on the ground that really stops <laughs> the Thors from entering the field either. He didn't go for any tanks, he's that only was... going for the bio in a limited amount too. That was such an expensive nothing fight for both players, by the way. Like, how many Vikings and Liberators just died on each side, right? 20 Vikings, 13 Vikings, 8 Liberators, like... And there was nothing to gain from winning that fight. Whoever wins that fight it doesn't is. push through and kill a base. Whoever wins that fight, like, doesn't kill production. That was such well, an expensive... Well, you do. Okay, I mean, if yo, you did win oh. that fight, you try and go on top of the production. Well, what, uh, what I'm saying is, like, you get on top of the production with, like, what's gonna be left over, like, what, five Vikings? Two Liberators? Yeah. Like, Okay, I don't think that's gonna cut it, but that's me being a noob, I guess. I do. I'm really interested in this choice out of cure, though. His follow Remax is not more Vikings. He pro he was producing like ten Liberties at a time there for a moment. I don't um, know about that. Yeah. yeah, that's that's so. This is where I find it interesting, not good, but interesting because if all that extra splash damage is what it takes to kill the Vikings, and you do notice that innovation wasn't splitting right, and you kill the Vikings, then the Liberties could possibly win. It's on the ground. Mm -hmm. I You're right. It's one of those things, though, where it's like that's uh, very unlikely to happen. Like, the likelihood of that's not real. But keep in mind, guys, again, every time Innovation pumps out three more Vikings, it's way more better to have one more Liberator. Like, it's 33 units that are going to be stacked up. Well, especially for Cure, who is going up against tanks, he doesn't have the luxury of getting Thors and then moving them into position. The tanks would blast them away. So he has to go for another type of splash. I don't know how this is going to work out. Okay, I am Innovation's very splitting. To see. Yeah, if he knows. He, he figured it out. If Innovation doesn't split, he loses this without a doubt in my mind. But he split pretty good. He's got a really good Viking count. As cool as this fight is, Thors. it's over. Cure, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, even in the upgrade lead here, the plus three armor. And this is Cure dying, unfortunately. He did get faster expansion, I guess, a little bit. But Innovation was not very far behind. And the Liberator, that Liberator tactic didn't work out. There's an interesting question to ask here, why were battle cruisers not made? Yamato Cannon could have done a lot for this game, but I think you almost have enough Vikings where you're you're nearly one-shotting a battle cruiser. So even then it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, I think there's no reason even for Cure to go for a battle cruiser. The Thors would be extra special against them, and then you have all these factories as innovation, you could go into Widow Mines. Yeah. Which I mean, would have been terrible. Yamato is so tempting because you know it's going to secure the shot. You know you can teleport away, but it's just it's too expensive, too risky, and it's too slow. Uh, regardless, though, Innovation now with a 2-0 lead. We're going to go to commercial break, guys. Could be the last game coming up. All right, folks, we're back. Thanks for chilling with us while we had the lobby get set up. I'm going to replay some bits that came in, though. So while we had Lithium being busted earlier, and the dude is rocking the title a bit boss right now. We did have Magic in use take his mace out. Take some swings at him. 300 bits. Thank you very much for that, my dude. Be also, cool. you guys are spoiling us. I, so, to be clear, like, those donation goals we have in the corner, that's, like, kind of combined, hopefully, if we're lucky and spoiled brats, we can make, like, 100 bucks in a day. 
The fact that you guys filled up both bars. Like, what? Okay, cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's super cool. Uh, but Odyssey time. Let's get into it. All right, folks, welcome back. It's game number three and possibly the last match of the day. He's up 2-0 and he looks to be in command of this TVT. Those are pretty good wins for him so far. In the bottom right, it's the Red Terran Innovation. The top left is the Green Terran. He's Cure. I do like that as we watch this, it's not that Cure doesn't know what to do. I mean, his thought process was there. I mean, granted, I'm not saying it's the greatest idea, but being in the situation he was forced to be in, choosing to go Liberators instead of Vikings when he was behind in upgrades and behind in Viking count, like, it's clear that he knows the ins and outs of, like, what could work, where, how units work, their interactions. But, man, if you get behind somebody like Innovation, you're just not coming back. Like, anytime Innovation does this little bit of damage early game, whether it's getting a 10-worker lead or just a bit of a Banshee for damage, like... Dude just runs away with it, seriously. He he does. TVT seems to be going especially well for him, which is always a question when it has a dynamic shift in the meta, like Cyclones now being dominant. Um, it's always like, well, you know, this is someone else going to be the smarter player this time? But Innovation playing as smart as ever, even like, I'm even more impressed with how well he's reading these. As I, I think that it can get a little, a little weird, even if you think you're pretty damn good at the matchup. So reading that yeah, Cure would have gone for the mass star ports, matching him on the mass star ports, scanning, just playing very safe, really working out well. And Cure is on the ropes. Uh, innovation forced to put a CC a little bit off center. Luckily, he can lift up and move it. So no stats dynamic for this game. I still can't believe that happened. It was like able to win and look so good doing it too. It was good. Freaking stats, man. Anyways, uh, Innovation heading across with the Reaper, catches Cures, of course, another map. He unfortunately got the eye shot first dynamic, so his Cure runs away. If he pauses, uh, like that, or you churn, you're just gonna lose. Tilt City. And... Tilt City, he's not, yeah. he didn't go for a second Reaper. So, Innovation, by winning this so hardcore and getting his own second Reaper, now puts Cure in a very difficult position as Reactor. Oh, delays the command the center. Barracks factory isn't done yet. Hellion is the fastest thing he could make, so his intention might have been to make a Cyclone, but now it's gotta be a, a Hellion. Uh, boy. Yeah, three workers is already pretty good for a single Reaper. The fact that these three workers were pretty, at least one of them was critically important. Uh, building the CC the way it was, like, ah, uh, jeez. Tilt yeah. City is population cure right now. <laughs> so cure said it might have been his intention to go for a cyclone it's kind of hard to tell as it's a very common opener in general but got the hellion getting a widow mine now kind of hiding his starport in the very back maybe hoping innovation thought it was just a cyclone opener like he would swap the factor with the reactor but if his plan is to get away with a widow mine drop i don't think that's very scary if his that plan is to get away with a banshee i think that's scarier Well, two Reapers, two Hellions. Something's going to get some damage done. Hellions will distract up here, I suppose, and the Reapers will just go straight to the main. Yeah. Oh, good. You're getting another <laughs> copy past the two. <laughs> well, Nicely done. I guess that was the intention of the Widow Mine, but it will not kill two Reapers, so... Still gets in the back, sees the building starport with no tech lab. Very important, by the way, that Cure did not overreact by pulling everything to go for that Reaper. Those Hellions could have gone in. No, that's not an option. He's coming across, and it's six Marines and a Widow Mine. It's an awkward attack. Um, I mean, the Widow Mine will soften up a lot of SCVs if it gets the hit. That's a big if. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a very big if. Innovation was so on top of his scouting, by the way, that even with the Reapers getting in there, he had other units going around the map looking for proxies. After all, he was proxied in the first game. This Banshee does get locked on for like a second. 
Uh, but now knows that the Cyclone is coming over to the side of the map and is going to take the chance to go across and still deal damage to Cure. Winnovation, I don't know if he has enough units straight up to defend against this. You know, Cyclones are pretty good, but I don't think this is going to cut. In fact, with especially Cure's own Cyclone coming into the fight. Well, eventually it's... <laughs> Gets stuck on a, on a command center. Scan goes down, but not in time for the Widow Mine to get the shot. Big old Cyclone shouldn't do enough damage, anyways, for the Banshee to die. And this is being held, but this Banshee of Innovation, the one that he risked going over here, not micro, doesn't do anything oh, at all. Cancelled. Wait, definitely cancelled, right? Not killed. Yeah, cancelled. Okay. This Banshee goes down too, and that's it. It's cure. Strikes back. Hey, it's a point on the board. Not bad. I will say that kind of game is going to be very difficult to replicate, though. Like, <laughs> that was the Reaper almost won that game for innovation, for goodness sake. Like, Cure may have got a couple of lucky breaks there, if we're going to be honest. I think so. Innovation has had, up until that game, pretty perfect decision making. I think that time it was questionable. He should have just brought the, the Banshee back. Chad is getting so out of hand right now. So many people are getting tagged every time the new copy passed. <laughs> what are you doing, zombie? Damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, as chat continues to get a little bit too weird for us, we approach the end of the broadcast. <laughs> Things are getting silly here. Uh, we're going to game four. And this will be Innovation's map pick, but from a very limited map pool, as we've mentioned many times now. Catalyst. I still, every time they type cattle, I swear to God, I still, my brain goes Catalina. It shouldn't, yeah. and I wish it didn't, but it does. I, same for me, same for me. Makes me sad. Actually, so part of the coffee challenge thing, was it Terminator? I can't remember who picked this. Uh, what The challengers got to pick at any map they wanted. And while a lot of people kept standard maps from the current map pool, someone picked Catalina. And they're like, I'm only doing this for who plays the intro. So I had to like go dig up the fucking intro. <laughs> I was like, so painful to do. I was like, I thought we were done with this forever. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so All right, much bully. Four. <laughs> See, he's a catalyst. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we are at game number four. Score is currently two to one in the favor of this guy. To the top left, it's the Red Terran. Innovation. In the bottom right, as the Green Terran, it's Kier. All right, so we've got this really dumb copy pass the chain going on, of course. And I'm just like looking for the original. I don't even know who or why. And it's like Snyro 35. <laughs> I feel so bad. We're like bullying this guy. We don't even know why. And he's like, he's just like, I'm out. Peace. I can't. Yeah. Someone said not to argue with him. And then he was like arguing why he shouldn't not be arguing with him. <laughs> oh, great. So this actually spiraled for a good reason. Got it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But it, he really, yeah, it wasn't really his fault. But, you know, imagine like Twitch chat, like imagine if it really reflected the real world. You know, historians and sociologists in the future will look at Twitch chat, I'm sure, is a very interesting thing to study. But imagine if this would, would happen in the real world. Someone said something funny, and then everyone else parodied it, but included the first person's name in the list. In other, <laughs> in, in the real life, we would be like, what are you doing? Like, why? Like, that's not funny. They already said it. But with Captain like Cost, it's like the clearest thing in the world. What the fuck? It's like a real childish adult who's just like... It's like everyone in the room agreed to play the the mime game or whatever it's called. Telephone? No, no, not telephone. The one where you um you copy oh what the person saying. Can you imagine trying to take copy pasta and playing telephone with people, just seeing what it was at the end of it? Like classic <laughs> phrases, like the attack helicopter thing. Whisper it to the next person's ear. See what it comes out at the very end. Yeah. Those games were really hard to play though, because you always had, if you, like, I remember we did this in Scout. It was like a trust thing, right? You did the telephone game to see how, if, if we could get the same message out after nine people. But we had this one rowdy kid named Kyle, and he would always just intentionally change. Like, he'd oh, hear yeah. crystal clear. He whispered, like, the, the phrase would be, um, I love camping. And he'd whisper the next year, I love dicks. I'm like, dude, that's not what they said. I know that's not what they said. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> That's what I always thought the telephone game was. I didn't really believe that people would eventually misconstrue what was said. I always thought it was testing who was the, the jackass, like who was going to yeah. be the one that ruined it. It had the um, the Ouija board effect. You're like, oh, who's moving it? Who changed it? Like, 
Who said the thing? I don't understand that effect either. Did you just see who's moving it? Uh, actually, I tried a Ouija board for the first time, and I will say it's a little bit more deceptive than I anticipated. I was I was trying to be the one to control it, but was not winning the forceful fight. And if I pushed it too hard, it would be obvious that I was trying to push it too hard. So there's some subtlety <laughs> to it. Anyways, uh, thanks, Nicholas Chaswa, donate two dollars. Saying how many Terrans do you need to change a light bulb? None, because they can't reach the top of the ladder. Ta da! Uh Oh, that's good. I'm laughing at that because we're in the finals after casting two semifinals of all Terran versus Terran. <laughs> I hate this, all right? Okay, that's, that's, yeah, that's kind of a funny timing. I hate this though. Mods aren't here, I swear to God, for the first four hours of this cast. And when everyone's having fun copy pasting, that's when they put emote mode on. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> you guys. Uh, you know, Innovation is doing uh, quite a bit of damage here successfully denying the natural base, but Ooh. not really enough considering that he went for a later CC. I think this is something that maybe evened it up at best. I like that he pulls back that Cyclone, by the way. Uh, yeah, he could have gone in there and maybe gotten a couple of SCV kills, but having this for the follow-up fight and having it a numbers advantage over Cure is what? gonna be big. What is that engineering bay placement? Desperate. I feel like that's gonna bother him in the future. He's gonna chain a wall around with like three supply <laughs> depots. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what the... I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stare at this thing angrily. Like, why? Why are you a thing? I want to say he meant to build something else, but he could have been afraid. You know, he knows innovation was one basing. There's a potential he was going to a faster banshee. He really felt urgency to get engineering bay down. I guess. Put it down literally anywhere else there. Right, right. Was, here's that repaired up Cyclone uh, being joined by a fourth one. Or maybe that's the repaired up one season because it's damaged. But four Cyclones is going to be ridiculous for damage. And Cure just... I love the Banshees. I like what he's gone Ooh. for here. But this is going to kill a lot of SCVs before they go down. This is a lot like... Oh, uh, <laughs> oh my god, the micro and innovation. Keeping those, keeping those Cyclones alive. How does he do it? This is a lot like Alive versus Cure, except maybe this wins. But I was going to say, Innovation's taking a much faster third base, and that itself would have been a big, big boost. But this is just him winning. All right, then. Cure, does... you done goofed. You stopped voting Cyclones. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about, though, when we said this earlier. It's not a dynamic of the game. You can't skip Cyclones. you got to play that phase. Innovation takes the 3-1 with the most ridiculous end. Of like, man, what the f <laughs> He's so good. He is Innovation hits these slumps and he gets really depressed and like he gets moody about like when he loses and balance whiny even. And I'm just like, dude, how? How do you even lose in the first place? You're so good at StarCraft. But all right, sad to see Cure fall, but well played out of both. Really good, Alima League today. Surprised, frankly, to see the TVTs and the quantity in which we had them. But uh, even after the front page, we held like close to 4K viewers for a while, so that's pretty legit. Thank you guys all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, thank you again, everybody who donated or cheered bits today. This was a really awesome welcome back to some procasting. But we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, so about two and a half hours from now, but tomorrow. Um, and we'll be doing some 2v2 content, so that'll be pretty fun. We'll see teams like... Actually, which teams are playing tomorrow? I should probably look that up. Uh, January 16th, yeah, BC Cutie and Nurcio versus Goblin and Starkiller, then Lily Kanina and Knight versus Damaga and Braddock. So, be good times. Like, uh, they're best of threes, not best of fives, but it's 2v2s and it's like a GSL group style. So, five best of threes, all 2v2. Starts at 10 a.m. Pacific. Be here, don't miss it. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys then. Other than that, Zombie Group, you've been doing a lot of casting elsewhere, you've been doing a lot of streaming on your own. You want to do some shout-outs here before we take off? Yeah, follow me on Twitter at DG Gaming on Twitch, Zombie Grub, and YouTube, Zombie Grub. Join my Discord channel. If you go to my Twitch page, it'll be there. And uh, I'll be streaming later tonight for a few hours. And uh, I'll be at Juice Adelphia this weekend. That kind of covers it. There you go. 
All right, uh, for me, follow me on Twitter, Friends Square Kings. Follow channel Base Trade TV, all that good stuff. Follow here on Twitch too if you haven't. Uh, like I said, there's no replay packs to go out from today because the Elima League is the only one that handles their replay packs, but everything else we do, we send replay packs out of. So be excited for that. Um, we have a streamer friend online who actually we're gonna go host for this. And I want you guys to make use of the new Ace Raid emote. So we have Ace 3, if you didn't see, is the brand new introduction to the emote list. Ace 1, Ace 3, Base Raid, it's kind of the idea. Madeline Inc. Very talented artist. We've hosted her a couple times in the past. She was very recently partnered, like a couple days ago, she was partnered on Twitch. So let's go celebrate that with a big old host. So I'm going to play some ads to end the stream, then we'll send that raid over her way. Give her some love. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great whatever you're doing for the rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow.